We now turn to Zambia, where the economics Lubinda Habazuka says the conflict between Russia and Ukraine will destabilize global trade. But Zambia can find a way of benefiting from the situation by tapping into the market of countries with people that are either exiting the country. He says the country can also export fresh produce like fruit and meat products to Russia, which were being recently supplied by Western countries before sanctions were imposed. He further added that Zambia can also take advantage of capital that was moving to Russia by supplying the needed commodities. Well, joining us uh, this morning is Dr. Lubinda Habazauka himself. Yes, good morning. the Zambian economist. Thank you so much for being here this morning. It feels really good to have you here. I mean, you've made this uh, statement uh, in Zambia right there, and you're here at News Central on Breakfast Central to further dissect this uh, situation. Uh, why would you say that um, uh, Zambia should take charge of uh, this opportunity? Good morning, and thank you very much for, <clears throat> for having me. Uh, first of all, when you look at uh, uh, what's happening uh, between, um, I'm not calling it uh, a war between uh, Ukraine and Russia. It's a conflict between uh, the West and, and Russia, and it has got more, much more to do with uh, uh, with the way the financial uh, international financial architecture is. So uh, a country like Zambia and Africa in particular should not be uh, should not be drawn uh, into this conflict, uh, especially economically. Uh, the West is putting sanctions on Russia, uh, but for, for us as Africans, Zambia in particular, this is the time to take advantage of this. What was Russia getting from Europe? Russia from Europe was getting, and uh, what was Russia getting from Europe, which we can supply? Uh, Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, were giving them a lot of fruits. So fresh French produce were able to uh, to to provide uh, right here from uh, from from Africa, and uh, the fact that uh, Russia is being suspended from each and every organization has seen Russia starting to dismantle uh, also the agreements with with Europe in terms of uh, the goods. For example, we cannot most of Af African countries cannot bring agricultural produce into Europe uh, because they say we, we we don't meet the quality or certain sanit, uh, sanitary conditions. So this is the time now uh, to move and, and trade with a little bit more desperate Russia that is looking for more trade partners. So this is the time for us not to be engaged in, uh, in, in this war negatively, but to go and engage Russia and see we can provide you uh, these particular uh, types of goods that they need. Then on the other part, Europe has been providing Russia with, uh, uh, you know, low-cost, long-term funding. Russia is an economy uh, of uh, 150 million, and it's among the top largest economies in the world. So the, the sanctions will lead or are going to create enough uh, resources that are going, just going to be idling in, in Europe and in the USA. We know that there's a crisis of overproduction in Europe and in the USA. The economy, their population are, are dwindling. Uh, they have overproduced everything. So they are going to look at our new markets. What are the new markets? That is Zambia, Nigeria, and the, of the African continent. So for them, for us as Africans, what we need to do is now to say, look, you can't bring in just vehicles like that. You need to come and uh, set up assembly, uh, motor assembly plants, for example. Like I know, um, you know, in Russia, you have Mercedes-Benz, BMW, you have uh, all sorts of companies operating in, in, in Russia. Most of them are closing down, except the French saying they are staying. So we need now to say, uh, don't bring us a finished product. Can you give us this money? We you invest with our investors, and, uh, you invest with our people here and uh, start manufacturing or assembling these vehicles. I'm telling you that uh, Europe has lost a huge market for their motor vehicles. Europe was, uh, Russia was their largest market in terms of motor vehicles, in terms of uh, other high-tech products. And of course, China, uh, of course, the space that is being left in Russia is opening up to China. And uh, right. for, for, for Africans, we need to watch the steps of China. Uh, China has been relatively neutral 
uh, in this in this case, and it was very unfortunate that the African Union, uh, majority of the countries, went and voted against Russia. Uh, what is going to happen is that a lot of African students, for example, study in Russia, uh, for, on, on the Russian uh, scholarship, there are more Africans studying in Russia hmm. than in the West. Right. Now, now, doctor, I mean, looking at the situation, looking at the situation in terms of the fuel price hike, we know that the last time this happened in Zambia was in 2018. And the reason for the fuel price hike was because of the rise of the price of international oil, the international as at that time. And there was also a, um, a depreciation of the local currency quacha in the country. Let's also not forget that Zambia is being known to export copper. That's been one of your major means of generating revenue in the country. But there's been a decrease in, uh, in copper exports in Zambia. Let's also look at those situations and see what we learned in 2018 that should have been implemented in 2022. Why don't we have this implementation already in place to ensure that it doesn't repeat itself again? So when you look at uh, uh, fuel prices, uh, it's not a secret that fuel prices are going to go up high. As uh, just yesterday, Gazprom Oil uh, received uh, uh, their first sanctions from the European Union. That means you are, you know, certain amount of uh, supply to, 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 to Europe has, is going to reduce. The USA uh, banned that. So on the international market, there's going to be less fuel and the prices are going to push high. And Zambia, as a country that is adjusting fuel prices monthly, will definitely have to adjust upwards uh, for the month of uh, April. Now, how Zambia can take advantage of this situation is, look, uh, Russia, you have lost this market, but uh, most of the Russian companies are mostly government to government. You're able to negotiate, um, to negotiate uh, discounts. So this is the right time for governments like the Russian, uh, Zambian government to go and negotiate for a discount for 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 oil supply um, for oil supply deals, and if Zambia got a one-year deal, for example, at uh, a fixed price, that is keeping oil price stability uh, for 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 the next one for the next one year. But unfortunately, Zambia is also in the web uh, of the International Monetary uh, Fund, uh, and you know the International Monetary Fund basically is controlled from 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 the USA and 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 from Europe so it, it's much less likely to see Zambia moving towards uh, towards that uh, that route but for African countries to take especially those that don't have oil to to be able to keep um, you know you know stable oil prices the Russian oil the euro uh, is uh, um, it's, it's, it's sold at a discount. It's cheaper than, uh, than, than Brent and all these other brands. So this is the time to move in, to go to a desperate Russia, to ask for, you know, fixed uh, prices over uh, periods of time. For example, what is happening in Zambia? We are repricing every month and prices are moving up high. Uh, for, 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 for you to understand the magnitude, um, five liters of cooking oil was something like um, $15 last month uh, that's five liters of cooking oil today as we speak it's twenty dollars but salaries haven't increased for the past three four years so uh, we expect to see uh, a high inflation that is going to be created by what is happening in ukraine the other thing is wheat uh, russia produces about 15 percent of the global wheat supply major consumers being uh arabic countries egypt uh, North Africa and even Southern Africa, including Zambia itself and Nigeria itself. So Ukraine also is a major supplier of that. So what is going to happen is that uh, wheat prices are going to push high, up high. And that is the price of bread going up high. In India, people eat uh, the staple food comes from, you know, from wheat, chapati. And so we are going to see those uh, prices uh, moving up high. And for people to be able to afford their, you know, step of uh, step of food, and you know, bread is a component in every every person's breakfast in Africa. Uh, of course, those that are able to afford, and uh, for them to be able to, if they are running businesses, for them to be able to afford fuel, for them to be able to afford, uh, uh, you know, a, a decent meal, prices are going to move uh, up high. And diesel is a major, you know, cost component in every production transportation. You are going to see prices moving up high. I mean, we are already seeing that in the USA. 
and the triple uh, uh, the ripple effect is going to is already reaching Africa now. All right, mm. now. Quite interesting. I'm saying uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Doctor uh, Lubinda. Well, we've looked at um, everything you said and looked at the fact that uh, you've uh, mentioned some of the areas that uh, Zambia can actually tap in is uh, one thing that uh, we hope uh, gets a positive feedback. But we'll look forward to have you back on Breakfast Central to further break uh, down uh, more of the ideas that you're coming up with. Hopefully, the president will also tap into these ideas. Thank you so much for being here, Doctor Lubinda. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you.